Assalamu alaikum welcome to medicine with chips today we are going to have uh, the clinical examination of the facial lung that's the cranial lung number 7 and uh, it has three uh, components it is a motor sensory and parasympathetic the motor component of the facial lung it supplies the facial muscles which are responsible for the facial expressions sensory part it supplies the anterior two third of the tongue and it is responsible for the taste sensation on the anterior two third of the tongue parasympathetic part it supplies lacrimal sublingual and submandibular glands and responsible for the secretion control of these glands in this video we will go for the clinical examination of the motor part of the facial nerve for the sensory part you will go for the video number 1 uh, for the in, for the taste sensation of the tongue and uh, for parasympathetic uh, in clinical examination we don't examine the parasympathetic part of the facial nerve so let's begin with the uh, examination of the motor component of the facial nerve so uh, now we are going to examine the motor component of the facial nerve uh remember always approach the patient from the right side and uh, give your introduction and consent first okay so uh, assalam alaikum i am dr tuba we are going to examine your facial now during this procedure if you face any difficulty you, you will let me know okay so have you any issue no okay so uh, first of all just inspect the face of the uh, person is there any asymmetry is there any drooling uh, abnormality with the blinking of the eyes is there any uh, problem with the symmetry of the face just examine the face of the person then we will go for the examination uh, first of all uh, i will give the command to the person and he will do what i will say okay and an example uh, examine the uh, strength of the muscles and the in integrity of the facial nerve okay so uh, will you please look upward uh, while uh, keep your head steady okay so the wrinkling on the forehead it indicates that the facial nerve in this person is intact okay uh, i'll uh, close your eyes and don't let me to open your eyes okay okay uh, then uh, okay it's okay will you please puff your mouth Okay, and don't let me to uh, deflate your mouth. Okay. Okay. It's okay. Then uh, will you please show me your teeth? Okay. So in this way, we have examined the facial now. We have examined uh, muscles which are supplied with the facial now. Uh, so in this way, uh, that's all for the facial now examination. Uh, now so far we have done with the parts of the facial now, motor sensory and the parasympathetic and the clinical examination of the motor part of the facial now. Now I discuss the uh, course and distribution of the facial nerve along with the lineage of the facial nerve at different levels of the during the course of the facial nerve. So let's begin with the course of the facial nerve. So facial nerve begins in the pons. Uh, it, around the abdominal nerve, it forms the internal genu and forms the facial colliculus. This is the motor nucleus of the cranial nerve seven. Along with the sensory nucleus of the cranial nerve seven, they unite and leave the brainstem at the level of the pontomedullary junction. They then it, it then enter the internal auditory matrix. And to the internal auditory matrix, it enters the internal ear. To the internal ear, it then enters the geniculate ganglion. From the geniculate ganglion, a branch of the facial nerve arises, that is the greater petrol nerve, that moves to the trigeminal ganglion, and it then supplies the lacrimal gland. And is involved in the control of the secretion of the lacrimal gland, that is the tear production. Okay, then from the internal auditory matrix, it then enters the middle ear. So in the middle ear, it gives rise to the two branches, that is nerve to the stapedius, which supplies the stapedius muscle in the middle ear, and the caudal tympani nerve. Caudal tympani nerve within the middle ear, it then goes to the submandibular ganglion, which is uh, hanging with the sublingual uh, lingual nerve. In the submandibular ganglion, it gives rise to the parasympathetic fibers, which then supplies the sublingual and submandibular glands and control the secretion of these glands. After exiting the middle ear, it then uh, uh, exits the skull through the stylomastoid stylo foramen. By exiting through the stylomastoid foramen, it gives rise to the three branches: that is, the nerve to the digastric, nerve to stylohyoid, and posterior auricular branch. These are two muscles that are present in the neck, and posterior auricular branch which supplies the posterior auricularis and occipital, occipital part of the occipitofrontalis muscle. After uh, uh, after it enters the parotid gland, after leaving the parotid gland, it goes to the five branches that supply the facial muscles: temporal, zygomatic, buccal, mandibular, and cervical nerve. These supply the facial muscles, and these muscles are responsible for the facial expressions. So we have done with the course of the facial nerve. Now we'll see the lien at different levels of the facial nerve. Uh, first, we see the lien at the level of the stylomastoid foramen. 
at the level above the caudate tamponine nerve, above the nerve to stapedius, and the lien at the level of external genome. We'll see them separately at which level the lien is and what are the symptoms of the lien. So uh, let's begin with the lien at the stylomastoid foramen. So if the lien is at the level of the stylomastoid foramen, the nerve below the stylomastoid foramen, which is supplying to these structures, all the structures, they will lose their function. And there will be, ultimately, there will be the Bell's palsy or the facial palsy. Then we'll go for the lien above the level of the caudate tamponine nerve. So the nerve below, the, uh, below this lien, it supplies the uh, parasympathetic fiber to the sublingual and semimandibular gland along with the taste fibers to the anterior two-third of the tongue and also these muscles. So when the lien is at, is at this level, so all this function is lost. That is the taste sensation is lost, uh, salivation is lost. Uh, there will be the no muscle control uh, below this lien. And then we'll go for the lien above the nerve to the stapedius. Now to the, uh, below this lien, the nerve is supplying the nerve to the stapedius, which is involved in decreasing the intensity of the sound. Uh, but when this lien, this lien happens, there will be the no uh, in, in decrease in the intensity of the sound and there will be the hyperacusis. Along with hyperacusis, there will be all the symptoms, that is the, the loss of sensation, there will be the no salivation, there is the facial nerve palsy. Okay, then there is a last lien at the level of the external genome. So when there is a level, uh, at the level of the external genome, we, we know uh, at the level of external genome, there is the uh, origination of the greater petrosal nerve. Which supplies that, uh, which enters the pterygopalatin ganglion, supplies the lacrimal gland. So when there is no uh, innervation for the lacrimal gland, there will be the no salivation. Along with all the lien, uh, liens and their symptoms, they will appear at the when the lien is at the level of the external genome. So now we summarize the liens and their uh, symptoms. What will they be appear when they are different levels? So now at the level of the stylomastoid foramen, there will be the facial palsy. That is the uh, facial muscles, they lost their function. Above the caudate tamponade, there will be the facial pulses, that is the A, facial palsy and decrease in salivation and loss of taste of the anterior two-third of the tongue. If the lien is above the level of the uh, nerve to the stapedius, there will be the facial palsy, there will be the, uh, that is the symptoms that appear when the lien is at the level of, above the level of the caudate tamponade, that is the B, along with there will be the hyperacusis because this is the, uh, because they also will be the loss of function of the stapedius muscle. At the level of the external genome, there will be the C, that is A, B, and C. All these symptoms will also appear along with the loss of the lacrimation because the lacrimal gland is no more supplied by the facial nerve, which is control, which control the, uh, the tear production by the lacrimal gland. So now far, we have done with the course of the facial nerve along with the lens of the facial nerve at different levels. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any queries, you can ask, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share with your friends. Thank you for watching. Allah Hafiz.